Welcome to the Laurent Collective Podcast, where we go deeper than just surface talk. Each week, we'll explore everything from family, business, creativity, culture, and faith. To make sure not to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and hop on to Instagram at Laurent Collective to chat with us about this episode. Hey guys, today we're having some fun and sharing our experience and moving from the United States to the United Kingdom. We have a good laugh at some of the funny word differences, even though we speak the same language. Welcome back. We're uh, here hanging out. Today we thought we would just have some fun. Yes. And we're all about going deeper, but going sometimes... Deeper. Yeah. You got to have fun. You have to laugh. You have to laugh in order to go deeper with people. People. Peeper? Peeper? People. Peeper. <laughs> people. Oh, no. Interesting. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to have some fun today with you guys um, and just share some funny things about being an American in the UK. Yes, it's the... We often get told, well, it can't be that different. You speak the same language. It's exactly the same. As our one son has actually <laughs> rose his hand in a large group sitting once when people said... Who speaks another language? Our son <laughs> froze his hand very confidently. Yes. And we thought, what is he talking about? I mean, he is learning some languages at school. So we thought maybe he would say French or Mandarin. <laughs> nope. He said, I speak British and American. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh I gosh. mean, legit, that might be valid. It could be considered a different language. True. I wouldn't have known In that until we lived here, though. Yeah, that's true. Very, very true. So we thought we would just give you some funny examples of, yes, words that are different, but also just some cultural things or just some things in general that are different. Some of them are going to be, I mean, there are some hard things that we have dealt with and continue to be hard. Yeah. Um, but then there's just stuff that's just, once you figure it out, it's funny and you just go with mm -hmm. it and you know it. And I'm sure when British people move to the United States, oh my gosh, yeah. I can only imagine. I mean, we've talked to friends that even visit the United States yeah. and the things that they find ridiculous and crazy and, and all Tell that. us how much space... Americans have. Why would you live here? There's so much space in the United States. Yeah. Or, I mean, the phrase we get, which there seems to be people, just if they haven't traveled a lot and that kind of thing, we'll, when we say we're from the Midwest, oh, is that near California? No. Or New York. Or New York. Yeah. Those are the two places. They know about LA. They know about New York City. And they have a very idyllic view of those places, too. And that's a that's a generalization. Which but, I, mean, I would say many Americans have of London. As oh well. my gosh like totally. that it snows in london every christmas that's one i get oh yeah. i can't believe you don't get snow in the movies yeah. there's snow <laughs> yeah we nope. don't get snow they did it one time yeah not so much anymore but so yeah anyways. so we're just gonna share some funny things um <laughs> I, i'm gonna share a difficult thing before we get into funny though um okay. one cultural difference here is um things just take longer yes so especially when it comes to anything in regards to like customer service mm -hmm. um that is one of the, you immediately you're put in that when you move here because you've longer got doesn't a, mean a bad thing it's just longer it's well something compared bad, to but, <laughs> compared to what we've compared used to what to. we were used to in the states so for instance there are certain things you need when you move here right away that are super important to have yeah. like utilities or a bank account and yep. then the order that you need to have those things is you know very difficult and so you have to have a proof of address well you how can't. do i but how do i get a bank account to pay for my rent if i don't have a proof of address yet because that's going to be my address because you need a bank account because you need that, a yeah. bank account um we it could be different in the states now we have been here almost five years but you know i well actually we walked in when we were back in the states we walked in yes it was a bank we'd used before and opened another account and changed some things for and it took us 30 minutes yeah for a bank account uh we walked into the bank we had a set first you had to set up a meeting ahead of time you can't yeah. just walk in you had to set an appointment set up an appointment yeah. um and then we were there for well two they yeah i think they tell hours. you you have to like you know all the things you need to bring with things you open yeah for two hours for this conversation and we were definitely there for that long yes. and you had to have all kinds of everything proof of address to prove who you were to this document to that document we i even went to open a bank account for our son who's a teenager um and we were there for an hour and a half for just him 
<laughs> yeah. He was 12 at the time. So it it just now I get some of it. Often our British friends will say, well, it's because of security and things like yeah, that. Definitely. Yes, I get it. Uh, but it's very frustrating when you're used to things being yeah. much faster as well as yes, I get the security thing. But then everything's on. Well, they they the slowly part. this is getting better, but for the most part, it's like yes, we can do that, like for utilities. But we'll need you to send this paper form that you need to print out and fill out, and mm-hmm. that's considered safer than doing yeah. it online. Everything <laughs> is on paper. It's really confusing. It's interesting to live in, you know, one of the more. It's a Western culture. Yeah, I mean, London is one of the cities in the world, yeah, and yet true. we are still using paper in so many ways. Yeah, it, 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 that's confusing. And customer service <laughs> is just different here. It's different. Yeah, It's different. Sure. Now, our British friends will say, oh, well, yeah, that's just how it is. But when now, again, we're using this as a generalized statement here. In mm-hmm. general, customer service can be really rubbish in the States as well. And I just used rubbish. Whoa, look at that. Um, it comes out just naturally now. Uh, but in general, the idea in the United States is the customer is always right. Right. Not That's here. not necessarily the thing here. <laughs> it's how do you prove the customer wrong? Yeah. It feels like, I mean, I have been in tears, particularly that first year we lived here, just trying yeah. to get things like cell phones sorted. and yeah. Or even our furniture for oh, our gosh, house our to Kia. be delivered. Oh, Ikea. I cry. I mean, I bawled my eyes out on the phone with that person. When they, they did s- come through, but still. They said, we showed up to your house. I said, no, you didn't. We've been here the whole time. Well, that's not true. And then they said the number of the house. And I said, that's not our number of our house. <laughs> oh, well, that's not what I meant. We did show up to the one that we said, and now you can't have your furniture for two weeks. Mind you, this is when we just moved here and we had nothing, zero furniture or plates or yeah, anything. anything. And all of it yeah. was coming. I mean, well, I we did do Ikea. It was just the best option to do. So, yes, yeah. customer service. Yeah. Difficult. I just know now if I need to have a customer service call or something with utilities, I block off several hours because I feel like to get to the bottom of what I actually need, it's going to take that time. So that's very different. But then there are also things that are sometimes are frustrating, but also hilarious yeah, too. So what's, like the what's words. some fun things? The words are, they're just fun. Because well, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes the words are just fun to say more than <laughs> the ones like that rubbish. we're used to. Rubbish is so much better than trash. Trash? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely like swimming costumes compared mm. to a swimming suit. Yes. So, but it's not a costume. It is a swimming suit. But it's a swimming costume. We, uh, because we live in London, uh, we, and I know this is this way in a lot of cities in the States, like we do our, a lot of our grocery shopping online. Um, and so I'll get a grocery deliver, delivery so I don't have to carry everything from <laughs> the stores and stuff. And the first time that I put in z- zucchini, nothing came up. And I thought, oh, there are things they don't have here for sure. But I thought zucchinis, I mean, they have to have zucchinis they here. They don't have them here. And I didn't even <laughs> order. I just thought that's it. I guess not. I have now come to the terms of like, you Google it. There's Google for a reason. And it's a courgette. Yeah. They, they totally have them. And a eggplant is an aubergine. And there's plenty of like food items that have. Did, didn't you have, I mean, they have paper towels here, right? Oh, no, they're kitchen rolls. Kitchen rolls. A trash or, bag. Yeah, trash bag. Is a? Bin liner. <laughs> exactly. It is I a mean, bin liner. So if you are doing shop, I mean, obviously, if I were in the store, I could look and I could see the object. But like when I was trying to get a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and just. Or I just couldn't find. Or a vacuum is a Hoover. Is a Hoover. Okay. Hoover. That's a brand, I think. Is it? it yeah, it's a brand, but it's a brand here too. Just but everything's Hoover. just you Hoover the house. You don't vacuum the house. You Hoover, you Hoover the it. house. Yeah. So if you're shopping online, it can be extremely difficult. Except for Google normally comes and help. That's yes. for sure. Um, there are also things like the best. What? Well, I love, I love. You know, when we first moved here, and people were talking about. Oh, are you, you know, are you guys going to do fancy dress and like all this kind of stuff? I'm like, oh, they were I, having a fancy dress party. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I better I get a dress. Like, yeah, I need to go shopping. We, yep. We need to get, I need to get like a nice dress shirt and like all that stuff and have all that stuff ready to go. And that's not what they mean no, at all. It's a costume party. It's actually a costume party. Like a dress up. Well, I had a dress up. But yeah. A costume party is what we would call in the States. So, so think of like Halloween and stuff like that. 
feel like we took a yep. little commercial break there. Sorry if you heard our buzzer. Yep. Doorbell. Doorbell. <laughs> See where you... Buzzer. It was a practical example because the post... The post Not the here. mail just arrived yep. um, and wouldn't fit through are also... I mean, here in the city, we don't have mailboxes. We have like mail. What are I don't know actually what they're called. It's just your mail slot. Mail I don't slots. Know. That's a yeah. That's I interesting. don't. That may not be a cultural thing. That that's, just might be a city thing. But yeah. um, yes. So fancy dress. Fancy dress. Costume is party. A costume party. And if you show up in a, I mean, I guess you could say. You could say you're a James Bond or something <laughs> like that. But yeah. There. Uh, the one that our kids love, and it will never get old probably, is pants versus trousers always that's always a winner what are, what are pants pants yeah what are pants here 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 what are pants pants are your underwear your underwear yes so and um i you learn as you go and usually you make someone laugh or you say something <laughs> you've really offended somebody <laughs> there is somebody or confuse them or confuse like, oh my them. gosh can they i said i don't know i made a comment to another mom and i said mom sorry mom not mom yeah. um said oh i like your pants and she gave me a very strange look and she kind of giggled and she said has anyone told you that that's underwear and so you're commenting on my underwear right now and i was like uh no <laughs> <laughs> trousers i mean i mean most people they understand the american language in it too and they'll go with oh, it yeah. but other people just like to have a go at you and oh for and, sure pick fun at you when you say it the wrong way so our kids though are absolutely offended if i were to say that in public and say jude come here you've got something on your pants mom very embarrassed trousers oh yeah Uh, because what's more embarrassing than your mom telling you something on your underwear i guess Mm -hmm. but yeah uh, school dance like what if you had a fun school dance it would in elementary school instead of primary school which primary school here it would be called a it would be a school disco. Disco. And I think that's a lot cooler. I do too. Than that's saying way school more fun. dance. That today is my school disco. That sounds yeah. way fun. Exactly. The disco is way more fun. Generally, I mean, so far, our school that our kids are at, they've actually had a disco ball yeah. too. So, I mean, they go full on with it. Yeah. It's a true disco. Definitely. No, who needs a boring school dance? Uh, you do have people sometimes that are not very understanding of your different um, language word choice. And so when we did move here our daughter was still in diapers and i did walk into a place and i could not find them um and so i said to somebody that was working at the store i can't find diapers and she just stared at me in a mean way and she goes i don't know what that is and we don't have them and i was thought really and then somebody else that works at the store realized how rude she was being and said she just means do we have nappies (laughs) to which then that's pretty common i think people know that Yes, nappies and diapers. To which then, though, I did find out that particular store did not have nappies because in the city, uh, at least, we don't have like, I mean, there are bigger stores, but if you're in kind of like some of the high streets and stuff like that, um, we don't have like a mega store like a target or something like that yeah they do exist you can go to them but like where we live not necessarily i mean yeah i could get on a bus and go to the large tesco and there would be all the things in the one place or they have they do have costco here and stuff like that in general in the city they're smaller and they're come sometimes very special like specialty Mm -hmm. and so express groceries yeah one store did not have the nappies she told me to go down the street i think i ended up going three places before i actually found them um we often have that with light bulbs too light bulbs oh my gosh <laughs> don't get me started about light bulbs <laughs> there's four thousand i thought there were a lot of different kinds of light bulbs in the united states depending well, where you live and how old the building here's is the thing. there's the like light all bulbs these different... in the states yes there are different kinds of light bulbs in the states but you can go to some place but, and find them well yes you can go to a, one place and find them but the problem is and at least or at least for the states how they are they screw into screw the screw in the, how they the screw fixture. in is all the same. Yes. Right? Like the the fitting is always the same. Here, there are tons of different there's fittings. There's like it pops in. There's ones that have little prongs. There's a sco- more like the traditional one that we're yeah. used to in America. Oh, there's gosh. I mean, so and you so think course, you bought the right you, yeah. I mean, forget buying so them of online. Course, don't buy them online. It's a crazy. We have so many light bulbs so, that we can't use. The, yeah, I mean, we have probably multiple lamps that we can't use right now because i'm not really sure where to get a light bulb <laughs> and you've gone places and often they'll say oh we're out of those guys it's so confusing we're not sure when we're getting those back in anyways <laughs> so, don't get me started on light bulbs so we live in darkness sometimes in certain rooms that's for sure and then there's not just the words there's the spelling of words which Spellings. is hard you know you can 
the in technology that we have, I can set my phone or my computer to say like English, like British spellings, and so it will spell check it for me. Yeah. Uh, but when you're teaching your children how yeah, to spell words sometimes. and things like that, or a spelling, you know, they'll come home with a spelling test, and then I'm checking it, and I'll mark it wrong, and one of them says that's not wrong. No, that's not, that's yeah. right. And so there's lots of there's use favorite with a u all the mm-hmm. all those different words with a u i love that the word tire is spelled with a y here it's, it doesn't i mean some of it them looks so weird but it, it looks so weird I mean, I guess. and then there's the way that you say things there's still things uh, aluminum can you say it aluminium is how they say it here say it again aluminium <laughs> i think you said it right they say every i don't know every little thing in it there's and there's other words that then we feel like we say right and then they don't um process and process yeah process and process you know there's just some things and it does it gets to the point where it's funny and it makes you laugh oh yeah but i i can't I, it's aluminum i cannot i can't there are words that i've been willing like rubbish mm-hmm. and things like that but there are other words that i just can't do it our kids do which is funny uh but no yeah and <laughs> what so another another big thing we didn't really put this down but i was I was uh, thinking the weather and how they tell you the temperature is a big thing. Yes. They do everything by Celsius here. Celsius, yes. So that's and an adjustment. And again, we have Most lived of the here, world is Celsius, though. <laughs> we have lived here for five years and we still do Fahrenheit. Well, someone will go, did you know it was going to be negative nine today? And I'm like, what? Realizing they're talking to Celsius. Like if it was negative nine Fahrenheit. Negative nine in Celsius. It's still cold. Would be pretty cold. It's still cold. Yes. But not. Yeah. Anyways. Or or we'll say something like it's going to be 78. And, and they're, like, they're like, what? Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what? 30 something. I still am getting it. Or no, maybe 20 no, something. No, no. No. If we say it's going to be 40 something or 45 degrees, that's really hot here. Yes. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Where that's what I mean. Us, if I were to say 78, like they'd be chilly. like, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it also comes to how you do the dates here. So, mm. you know, if you're filling out a form or something and ask for your birthday, we in the States would put our month, then the date, then the year. Yeah. And here it goes the date, the actual day, yep. then the month, then, then the, month. the year. And that's still... That's even how you... like. Yeah, in and that's how you write you it, like write an it. email. Yeah, totally if you were to say we want to do something, I would typically in an American email say on March twelfth, and here it's like either twelve March or just twelfth March, and then yeah, like twelfth of March. Yeah, it's yeah. So those are just funny little things. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that we learned very quickly is the portions here are just smaller. So the big joke with most people here is like, oh, everything's so big in the United States, and they're right. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> very much so again when it came to groceries even when i go to the grocery store i'd pick up a thing and realize this is so small compared to what you know we have a family of five and so i need three of those not just one of those um and and there's legit reasons for that space is smaller here and so even your fridge is smaller like i i mean some people do have what we refer to as american size fridges Mm -hmm. and freezers but going to costco and buying things like that would fill up that just doesn't work for us we wouldn't have have space yeah we don't have space for costco size freezer things i can barely fit like a frozen pizza i mean we we basically if if you're american you're listening to this i feel like our fridge is basically two college dorm yes, fridges totally stacked on top of each other it's exactly what it is that's what it is like one is a freezer unit and one is a fridge yeah. some people just have a college dorm size yeah in their house and that's all that has the little freezer thing and the i mean yeah. that's just the space you have so um, funny. but that takes some use getting used to like to, then mm-hmm. you know looking at groceries for a family of five looks very different and how but you they, plan that out but i think what's what's cool is then because of that, they sell like loaves of bread, like in half loaves, yes, and things like that. So you're you are like being really mindful of what you're buying, and if you you're buying things that you need currently, you're not buying things to then like save for you know next month or whatever like that. Like you know that's been a transition mm-hmm. for us to figure out. Well, as well, but and then another transition that we absolutely love is just food is different here. Um, there's different regulations and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know you. Look for like you said also a whole loaf of bread if you're not going to eat it will get moldy super quick yeah. whereas in the states i mean we had some loaves of bread that could last weeks without getting moldy because of things that might be in it and stuff like yeah. that you know that varies of what type of groceries you might be buying but in general the shelf life of most things here is very short compared to in the states 
um, because of the freshness level and stuff like that, or the things that are not in it and that kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So that is something our, I actually our, enjoy. One of our sons is allergic to red dye, so he can... They don't do. They don't do that. They don't do. Well, they do here. have a form of red dye, but it's like a yeah. European standard, so it is yeah. different than the states. It but still can't. But they but actually he, put a warning on everything with it when yeah. that it's an E number. But he can have. He can some have of those it. Candies that he couldn't him. have in yeah. the states, which is awesome, or sweets. Yeah, so. and they do put if the red dye is in there, they do put a warning that says could cause behavior in children. It's some long warning. I've yeah. not seen. Maybe they have in the states now, but I've not seen that in the states yet. Yeah. Um. So yeah, well, that's something we enjoy. So. <laughs> What is the phrase everyone asked us when we first moved here that was very confusing? Well, it sounds slightly different than what they're actually saying. So they say, you all right, but really, really fast. It's, you all right? Like really, really fast. And for us, traditionally, if somebody asks you how you are, you stop and you share how you are. Well, especially, in some ways. Yeah. I mean, think about the last time somebody said, are you all right? Yeah. Like, like I'm doing it the American tone that I would have asked yeah, somebody right. that. Are you okay? You're it right. almost, I remember the first time somebody said, you all right? I was like uh, looking at myself like, oh, do I, is something wrong with me? Like, do I have something? Because that implies like, oh, I'm a little worried about you. That kind of thing. That is, what's the proper response here? What do you You're say right. back? Yeah, if you just say, you all right, right back? Yeah. <laughs> Not, oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Da, da, da. Like yeah. people will, in, 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 in general, uh, it tends to be a phrase to that, like you could be passing somebody on the street and they'll say that. Like we had lots of neighbors that mm-hmm. we will see and they're like, you all right? And then you go, you all right? And that's like a friendly like, hello. Yeah. How exactly. are you today? Or something like but that. But that definitely took us some time to figure that out. It was so, we had to ask people, I think, to be like, what do they mean? Why are they saying that? Um. And then there's the European cheek kissing, which COVID, mm. I don't know if that will come back. We'll see if that comes back. Well, that will be interesting. Or even like, even handshakes. Yeah, I mean, handshakes, but handshakes we have in the States. But the, ki- but and, the kissing of the cheek will be interesting. Yeah. Yes, the kissing of the cheeks is, can I've seen well, people yeah. do it in the States, but it's like, ooh, aren't you posh and that kind of thing. Like here, and you're it's, not dealing, the, it's hard because the first time somebody came in, I was like, well, I don't know what's going on here. Um, but then you're also dealing with different cultures. So like, uh, you know, one of our, yeah, we don't just have, British we don't just have the British London, two, sure. you know, one cheek, the other cheek. Then we also have other cultures where it's like full on kiss on the cheek, not just like a pretend kiss with the noise or there's the, <laughs> you know, uh, is it, uh, maybe it's our Greek friends or something. They do three kisses. It's, and then it gets awkward cause you then almost kiss the person. <laughs> it's yeah. not what you were trying to do but it's greeting men women everyone sometimes i've seen other men do it to other men yeah. that's not always as common but i mean yeah. that's hap- i mean it's just because we're dealing with so many cultures it's all but uh to go in for an american hug though no no no, no. Uh, no no that's a little aggressive yeah that's that's not something you usually yeah. have to ask for that which i has think been... for the most part i stay pretty like <laughs> you stay i'm an american i'll stay in my lane kind of thing and a handshake or a gentle hi (laughs) the kissing thing (laughs) i'm so nervous to get it wrong (laughs) (laughs) um and then you know schooling's very different here uh the years that kids start they start nursery and it's when i say that you might think like equivalent of preschool generally in the states you have to pay for preschool there's not it's not um involved with like the public school the system yeah um in the system here it is at the age i think it's three and a half half. um that they can go into that system um and be at school and uh yeah and so they're full-on doing stuff very i would almost compare it to kindergarten in the states oh for sure yeah Um, so then when we moved here our kids uh had missed that part and so we had a child that was supposed to be going into kindergarten in the united states but here he would have been going into year one is the kind of the the equivalent but it means he had missed two years of school here yeah the nursery and what they call reception yeah so he was catching so he was behind um same with all of our other kids and everything with with veda has been a little bit different because she has she's she's gone through through the system exactly how it was meant to be Mm -hmm. um but our boys had a lot of catching up to do and stuff like that and so um yeah they just they start school earlier i can i see both sides of the fence i see advantages and disadvantages to that Mm -hmm. but it is an adjustment if you move here it's been a it's been a good thing for our family exactly and there's obviously things now we have a teenager he's getting into like what it looks like what we would refer to like as sats or acts it's yeah. gcses here and it's very in a levels and it's very different it's very much like harry potter 
<laughs> yeah yeah you think like we talk about this all the time where you know when you're done reading harry potter and you're like oh my gosh how imaginative is that well it is but in in some like like especially like how they do houses and like all heads of stuff, house and heads of house and all that stuff in school. like that's legit like they do, they that, do here. do that they have houses our and... kids are in houses they have heads of yeah. their house they yeah. have all of that and, and that's just how it's how it's been and they're in the i guess in harry potter it's the owls and the newts and it's very much set up just like gcse's and a levels yeah. and stuff so it is funny to be like oh yeah that's where that and it's from. unique too because they yeah just it's not just like a traditional high school setting where you have four years of high school and then you can go to university. Like, they have like a there are other options yeah. and things like that for, for the kids, which is cool. So, yeah, and then our kids also. I mean, when it comes to schooling, because Zane, our oldest, is a little bit different because he has had some schooling in the United States and stuff. But our kids, you forget, like they're not taught American history here. Somewhat, no. they do dabble in it. They there are parts of it. Well, but it's just like if we were in the states, we learn about you learn European you have history, a European history, but it's a it's a specific class. Yeah, unless you yeah. take a specific class that's really focused on that, where they, I mean, we can go into Westminster Abbey and I can stand in front of uh, Queen Elizabeth's, you know, tomb, grave, whatever it is, and Jude and everybody can rattle off, you know, this is what happened. This is who she was related to. This is how many wives. Oh, King Henry, that one always cracks me up. Yeah. Oh, this was the first wife, this wife, because they learn a little song about all of his yeah. wives and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, when we watch Hamilton, we watched, I mean, we watched the whole thing and our middle son at the end of it said, wait, the United States used to be part of Britain? <laughs> Very confused. He was Didn't so, understand. that he missed the whole point of yeah. the musical. Some of that, and then we, I think that made us realize we've really got to be better at mm -hmm. educating I them. I mean, even to the fact that they don't even know who's on a penny. No, they didn't know who was on a penny, but I mean... It is a little bit easier here who's on well, yeah, all the money. Yeah. <laughs> it's the not, queen is the on queen everything. is so. just on it. It's not that varied. Um, but so their understanding of things. And, you know, we live in London. So I know this experience would probably be the same if you live in different cities um, in the United States. But there's just so much history here. So mm -hmm. when they're learning about certain things, they actually go to those places. Like yeah. I've been a helper on two Westminster Abbey um, field tours, trips, yeah. field trips for the kids where they've gone to those, you know, we did stand in front of Queen Elizabeth's grave and were told all these different things and able to see these things where, yeah, that's just opportunities they have to actually be in it here as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's so fun. Something we really do like about living here is vacation time. It's not, vac holiday. It's not vacation time. It's not it's holiday. holiday time. Uh, versus what it is in the United States. What's the normal here? What would be the normal... You, I would say for the normal, you start out with like 25 days off. Yeah, 23 to 20. I think 23 in there because there's some what they call bank holidays, yeah, which would true. be like our national yeah. holidays in the States. Yeah. Um, obviously very different than when you start off in the United States. And you're you lucky if you 10 have days. two weeks and sometimes sick time is included in that. It's yeah. not included in those for most places here. Yep. Um, and it's uh, really frowned upon if you don't take that time either. Like if yeah, you don't oh, take for that sure. time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost like I would say, no, not everybody would do this, but like in the States, you know, you'd always be like, oh, where do you work? Like, what do you do for a living kind of thing? Here, it's more like, oh, where, where do you holiday at? Where do you go? Where are you and, going? Whatever the next holiday that yeah, is coming. Yeah, where are you going? Or, you know, do you have a place that you go every year or whatever like that? It's more about like the experiences that you do outside of work and mm -hmm. things like that. So, And there are a lot of things of structures that just in the UK in general, most of Europe is one step ahead of the United States of like how they do maternity and paternity leave and that kind of stuff. Um, there's just some different things of that, but I think we really do appreciate and recognize now the importance of time off yeah, and rest, what in sure. rest um, and then how seriously they take that too, I think mm -hmm. is um, again, there are people that don't do that. Um, yeah. obviously but they it's it's more like yes you should take that holiday well, time we found we found for our family it's really cool that we have that time that we can go explore yeah and experience exactly. new things because that's mm -hmm. just that's us that's mm -hmm. our family yeah it's where some some people might they, they might not they just you know yeah i mean in the summertime when the when the kids are out of school 
in London our area, empty. London is very empty. Now, normally, mm-hmm. there would be lots of tourists coming, and that yeah. would be you crazy. go into central you London, to, and yeah, it's you crazy, go to tourist spots, where, but where, where we live, it's... it seems like a ghost town because yeah. everyone's just left. They've yeah. fled the city and gone or on their holidays. Or because we're such an international city, a lot of people fly home for the summers to wherever they're from and spend time there. So there's also uh, the confusing bits of uh, eating times. Let's call it that. <laughs> Sure. I mean, there is a confusion a little bit about supper and dinner in the supper states. Supper and sometimes. dinner, yeah. Who says what? Depending on where you're from in the states. So when we first moved here, somebody would say, "Can you come? O- can you know one of our kids come over for tea?" And I would think, "Oh, so like that's afternoon tea, like you know mid afternoon kind of thing." Mm-hmm. Or in some ways, what does that even? What mean? does that even mean, really? I mean, our, <laughs> when we first, well, our kids do drink tea now, but at the time, I was like, our kids don't drink tea. They're not yeah. going to want to come over for tea, and they're going to embarrass themselves, or you know. Yeah. Uh, feel weird about it but no that means dinner dinner time yeah um in the united states except for it can also mean depending who's saying that they may mean yes that's the time that we all have dinner like kids and adults together often though it means that's when the kids have dinner so it's an earlier time maybe when we actually (laughs) eat dinner um and then the adults would have theirs later later. Uh, but then it gets confusing because then they call school lunches, school dinners, school dinners. So yeah. I don't know. I, I yeah. honestly, there's haven't... something even, I can't, I can't remember it offhand, but there's even with the weddings too and how oh, they structure weddings. The, uh, wedding breakfast, the wedding breakfast, but it's normally, but it's, not breakfast. it's not breakfast. It's normally like afternoon or even evening and they'll call it the wedding breakfast, but it's some, I still don't understand there's, that There's one. aspects of it that are really cool though. So yeah. I, and but how I, it's structured. So We'll be honest, that one we haven't figured out. I still have to <laughs> because ask. Because we've only been to a couple of weddings. So. Well, yeah. And and even the even the tea times and all that, I still have to ask clarifying questions. So you just get used to doing that. And you, we have the excuse, I'm sorry, I'm an American. Dude, what does that mean? What yeah. time are you talking about? <laughs> um, and so I think, um, yeah, it's just, and sometimes it's very, I don't know. It's, it's people are usually, like I said, people are usually very gracious and will walk you through what it means or joke with you about mm-hmm. it. And as long as you don't take it super personal and realize we're dealing mm-hmm. with cultural differences here. And we'll have that too. We'll say something and people will be like, what yeah. does that mean? Yeah. I'm confused by that. Yep. And I love the fact that we live in a city where there are so many different cultures. And when we invite some, when we could invite people into our home um and i can't wait till COVID is over with and we can do that that again again. um but the the type of conversations and the cultural differences that we bring to the table in a sense and then we learn from each other and then we're like oh like we really like maybe what that culture does or how they handle this or whatever and like how could we adopt that a little bit so i think it's been really fun or one of our favorite memories is when we introduced a bunch of British people and some other international people to biscuits and gravy. <laughs> um, and when which... we say biscuits, you have to keep in mind that biscuits oh, yeah, here true. are like a cookie. Yeah. Um, it's not like a southern biscuit like we would have in the United States. Those would There's not really a version of those here. There's a scone or a scone, depending however you say it. Yep. There is that, but that's like sweet. And well, they would say it's not sweet, but we think it's sweet compared yep. to like a Southern buttery biscuit. And so when we showed them a picture of biscuits and gravy, <laughs> <laughs> the response they were very confused. was like, why would you, that looks disgusting. Granted, I get it. It does look really gross. Yeah, why would you eat that? Why would you eat that? Um, but as we've introduced them and then we have the same Oh, um, the, sure. uh, uh, we Christmas time means that there's Christmas cake, which sounds really good. Yeah, of course. I mean, Christmas cake. Sign me cake up. Cake anytime. Except sign for, me up. in our opinion, it's it's basically Christmas cake and Christmas pudding are a lot of dried fruits put together mm-hmm. combined with alcohol. Brandy, I think, is what they use on it. I think so. And the idea is that you feed. The Christmas pudding mm-hmm. and the Christmas cake. Now, how throughout long would you feed that? I was gonna say the year. Now, not everyone does it throughout the year, but in order, according to what we've been told, to get a proper to good Christmas cake or Christmas pudding, you feed it the oh. alcohol throughout the year. So you're eating something <laughs> that has literally been soaked in alcohol for. It's a whole sitting year. year long, like yuck. 
And then uh, for the Christmas cake, they put like a fondant around it. Yeah. I don't like fondant we're not, anyways. We're not fondant fans, but hey. The Christmas pudding, there's are. varied ways you can have it. You like you boil it so it's warm and then you can pour this like butter brandy thing or cream or you light it on fire. Mm-hmm. It's we have we will say we have tried it. We are always willing to try things. Oh, of course. We tried it one time. We tried it it's with not really our thing. And we decided no, thank you. No. <laughs> so, you but know. hey, it's okay. We tried but it, but we've introduced people into some of our traditions, like you said, biscuits and gravy, or the American Christmas sugar cookie is always mm-hmm. well loved That's here. That's a huge thing. Um, or or proper like cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls, yes. People love instead of cinnamon proper buns. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. And there are lots of... But that's... I, I think that is the one thing that we brings us to so much joy is when we get to, like, introduce others to some of the things that... From, from American culture that they're always curious about or whatever. But then it's always great to receive that from them as far as things that we're learning about their culture and everything like that. So. I mean, we had a whole... And that's the thing, like Pat mentioned. Uh, we live in a city that is so diverse and has so many different cultures. And that's so amazing. It can make it very difficult because you're trying to figure out, like... What's the right thing with this yeah. culture? Yeah. Am I supposed to show up on time at their house? Or am I supposed to come 15 minutes late or 15 minutes early? Because depending what country is a country of origin, one could be, you know, whatever you choose could be very offensive. Or yeah. do I bring a gift? Or do I not bring a gift? Or, or what type of gift? <laughs> what type of gift do I bring? Or, I mean, and thankfully for Google, that is easy to do. Or have they lived here long enough that they don't care about that stuff yeah. anymore, too? I mean, it's just... <laughs> It's you're constantly trying to figure it out and you make lots of mistakes and it's okay. It's part of it. Um, I think one thing uh, we didn't mention that I absolutely love here is the idea of like the British picnic. Yes. Oh, That's we a love it. For us. Of just to plop yourself down in a park someplace and mm-hmm. um, let your kids run. And often people bring, you know, Prosecco, champagne, or wine or mm-hmm. something and you just <laughs> chill as the adults. Cheese, crackers, Cheese, crackers baguette. Oh, the the sliced the meat, cheese, and the baguettes here are just they're just better than they are in the United States. That's for sure. That sounds so cliche European. I mean, it might not be like better, but it's cheaper. Well, it's cheap. I think it tastes better too. Well, I probably. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. I just remember when we went back to the states for we went a to couple go buy months. a baguette. We went to get a baguette and some it's brie, brie. Oh. and I was like, "What? That's so expensive." It was so expensive. We felt like we were being so expensive and very like bougie eating yeah. that in the United bougie. States. Where that's bougie? A, I used that interesting word. Interesting word. <laughs> so yeah, if it's again, like we said, this isn't this this episode was not oh like here's this deeper surface thing and all that yeah. kind of thing. It was just we need very to have much. Fun. We need to have fun, and we want to. Just share because we do get questions of like, oh, what's the funniest interaction you've had, or what's oh, what we'll often even post something sometimes, and I've used a word mm, yeah. that I haven't realized I've used, and someone will say, what does that mean, or what do you mean your kids are doing this at school, or those kind of things, yeah. and so we thought we'd just share some of our funny bits. I'm we have I have so many other things in mind, but we don't need to go on oh, forever. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> we might do another one, of course, of things um, of that. So let us know what questions you have though. Um, at, also, uh, not that we're travel agents because we are we are not, but one thing we do love doing is there is something about when you live in a place like London, you find kind of some of those hidden gems that may not be on the tourist path. Oh, for sure. Um, and that might be something we talk about in a podcast or something if you guys want to hear it. But if you are ever traveling into London and stuff like that, do let us know. I actually have an email that is just an email draft that I already have a bunch of stuff written down um, of things and fun places or little off the beaten path, maybe mm-hmm. like restaurants and stuff that we have found that, um, yeah, that we just enjoy and that are a different way to experience the city maybe than yeah, sure. we still do tours things too. Oh, yeah. So you still should do some of those. But, but yeah, so do always let us know on that. But yeah, for sure. So there's the differences between British and American culture that is just tapping the surface of it though but yeah. <laughs> and the adjustments and the experiences that we've experienced exactly. in it you know like i think we could be totally off on some of them probably yeah. but yeah yes and do let us know <laughs> if you're british and you're listening yeah let us know what we have left out did or we, that, did we get something wrong or that things that you find weird and strange from our culture yes. um from oh, coming from the united states and stuff so yeah we'd love to hear your guys input or things that you find funny or that you hear maybe on tv shows or different things like that and <laughs> would love to have a little banter back and forth with that but hope you had a laugh no matter what side of the pond you come from on it yes um and just enjoyed a little chat about the funny differences
After recording, we realized we missed a funny word difference that we couldn't miss bringing up. One of our children came home one day from school and said he was upset because a classmate had thrown rubbers in his class. We were, as you can expect, a little bit confused as that was the first time we had heard that. And we'll just say that in the States, that has a much different meaning than it does here. We finally found out that it does mean a rubber equals an eraser here. And now we can confidently tell our children to go grab a rubber when they need to erase something. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of the Laurent Collective Podcast. If you enjoyed today's podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave a review, which helps others find our podcast. Continue the conversation with us over on Instagram at Laurent Collective. We look forward to going deeper than just surface talk with you again next week.